Hi, I'm Margret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the, the .NET framework. <laughs> .NET framework is a programming infrastructure created by Microsoft for building, deploying and running applications and services that use .NET technologies such as desktop applications and web services. The first version of .NET Framework was released in 2002. <laughs> Here is a graphical representation of the .NET Framework 2.0. And you can see at the bottom we have the Common Language Runtime, which is the virtual machine component of the .NET Framework. It manages the execution of the .NET programs. Right above, we have the Framework class library. Here you can find a large amount of reusable classes, interfaces, value types, etc. And then we have three components. WinForms supports the development of GUI applications. ASP.NET supports the development of web applications. And ADO.NET is used to access data and data services. So after .NET 2.0, Microsoft released 3.0 and more components were added. One of them is Windows Presentation Foundation. This is another component that is used to create GUI applications and it uses DirectX to make the best use of the hardware that is available. We also have Windows Communication Foundation which is used to create web services, Windows Workflow to implement long-running processes as workflows, and CardSpace, which is used to manage diverse digital identities. <laughs> In the 3.5 release, uh, Microsoft added LINK. LINK stands for Language Integrated Curing and it adds query capabilities to the language syntax of c -sharp and also other .NET languages. It also added Entity Framework, which is an object relational mapper that enables .NET developers to work with relational data using domain-specific objects. <laughs> then it added a parallel link and task parallel library which helps developers to be more productive by simplifying the process of adding parallelism and concurrency to applications. And then in 4.5, we have the modern UI runtime that allows the development of Metro-style apps and also the task-based async model that was added. Now you had a brief overview how the .NET framework was developing over time. In this course, we'll focus primarily on the C-sharp language. For that, we will always need the common language runtime and the framework class library. We will also have a closer look at Link and in order to give you an idea of the environment in which C-sharp is used, we will also briefly introduce some of the other components, like Windows Presentation Foundation, Entity Framework, ASP.NET MVC, and the Task Parallel Library. But for now, let's have a closer look at the Common Language Runtime and at the Class Library. Both are fundamental components of the .NET Framework. The Common Language Runtime takes care of many CPU-specific details like memory management, garbage collection, thread management, exception handling, and security. Here is an image that shows how the software development in .NET Framework works. You can see how we have different .NET languages. In our case, we are going to use c -sharp. And then we're going to use a compiler, a C-sharp compiler, that translates C-sharp to in common intermediate language. This is the counterpart to the Java bytecode. In order to run the common intermediate language on the specific processor of a specific computer, we still need to translate the common intermediate language to native code. 
typically this is done uh, with the CHIT compilation. CHIT stands for just in time compilation. It happens during runtime as the contents of an assembly are loaded and executed. Uh, the performance impact of this chip compilation is usually not a problem. However, if it is, or if an assembly is used by multiple processes and we don't want to chip compile it multiple times, we also have the option to use the native image generator. And the native image generator allows us to translate the common intermediate language to native code early on during install time. So here you can see two acronyms, CIL, CLR, sometimes they're confused. CIL is the common intermediate language. So have a close look at the third letter of the acronym. Uh, CLR is the runtime, the common language runtime. Now a brief look at the second fundamental component, which is the class library. It includes classes, interfaces, and value types that provide access to system functionality. And it is designed to be the foundation on which .NET framework applications, components, and controls are built. All these classes, interfaces, value types, etc. are grouped into namespaces. Here, I'm going to introduce some of these namespaces that are most frequently used. Namespace system is just about always included. It includes the fundamental classes and base classes that are very commonly used, for example, class string, class map. System I.O. includes fun fun uh, functionality for reading and writing and data streams and files. System.diagnostics helps us monitor system processes. It includes a class called stopwatch, it has a performance counter, helps us debug. <laughs> System.globalization helps with culture-related information. For example, different ways to display a date, currency. System.data provides information that helps us manage data from multiple data sources. It also provides access to classes that represent the ADO.NET architecture. Another frequently used namespace is System Link. It includes the standard query operators that are frequently used in combination with collections. Here is a link. I want to encourage you to check it out. It allows you to read up more about the .NET Framework class library and the different namespaces it provides and the functionality those namespaces provide for you.